Hello everybody, this is the second video on the internals of the Beaker browser. This time I'm going to be talking about IngestDB. IngestDB is a relatively new database that I wrote for the DAT ecosystem. It's built on top of the DAT files and is designed to give a sort of traditional database abstraction so that you can interact with tables, reading records, and running queries instead of having to write directly to files. However, it's built directly on top of the file system, so what Ingest ends up doing is helping you read and write files, but with a slightly better experience. Let's go through how this works. Uh, first of all, Ingest scans different data archives for files. So you see over here we have three different uh, archives. They're being piped into IngestDB. Now let's say that one of these archives has the following file listing here, an avatar.png, dat.json, this posts folder with two JSONs in it and an image, and then this profile.json. Now imagine we've configured in just DB to look for files underneath the post directory with the JSON extension. So it would match these two files. So ingest will uh, consume these two files and write them into a table, uh, the post table. And this table will be what applications can then read and interact with and query from. But what they represent are files which are stored inside of this archive here. So here's the application reading from the post table. So what we're getting now is a kind of post database abstraction built from uh, files that are inside of this archive. An example of what the records might look like is right here, it's very simple. The actual content is this text attribute right here, hello world inside of it. It also has a created at attribute and here we're using a epoch integer. And then there are two, currently two added um, attributes. Um, right now index, or ingestdb adds um, attributes. They're always preceded with an underscore to indicate that they're uh, special. And one of them is the origin, which is the URL of the archive that this record comes from. And then the URL um, attribute tells you the URL of the exact file which this record was pulled from. So going back, this file right here, which translates to this record. And so upon reading, you would receive this data. Now, uh, reading um, is only part of the equation. You also need to be able to write. And so what ingest um, does is it exposes a API for adding and updating and deleting records. And so here we have the application using posts.add. This is the post table, and we're going to add a new record with the text foobar. Ingest will then simultaneously write that record both to its posts table and over here as posts slash 3.json to the archive. And so the archive is sort of the source of truth. If we were to knock out the, the table, which we actually could do, we could consider this table as being kind of a cache. The real data is being stored inside of this archive and then distributed out into the network using DAT. So we could knock out this table, rescan the archive, pull these three JSON files, and then repopulate the post table. So the most important write occurs on the archive, but for efficiency, the ingest also writes it directly to the, the um, cached table. In addition to uh, keeping a table, uh, it also maintains multiple different indexes. So an example would be for the posts that it might have a created at index so that you could have an application. Write a query like this, posts.where created at equals some number. That number would be found here and result in the posts2.json record. Uh, IngestDB lets you specify um, arbitrarily as many um, index attributes as you like. So that's a pretty uh, small but um, uh, comprehensive enough overview of what ingest is and how it works. So let's talk about how Beaker is using it in the next release, which is 08. You may remember this graph from uh, the previous video where I talked about the internal architecture of um, Beaker. If you're not familiar, this is actually the same architecture that any Electron application uses. 
The main process is uh, sort of the, um, the main controller. It's the uh, process that if you were to close it, the whole thing would close. It has multiple renderer processes. One renderer is assigned uh, to every window that's created. And then within that, the actual web pages, this is the user land, this is the content that you're browsing around, is created within the renderers. Now, ingest was actually originally created to be run inside of the applications. The idea would be that a website, a DAT website, would use ingest and then store the uh, cached tables in indexed DB. So it was created kind of quickly so that I could scratch an itch that I had when I was building an application. Um, then eventually I realized, well, if I'm going to use ingest DB inside of Beaker, I actually need to move it into the main process so that all the different web views would be able to access one source of truth instead of each maintaining their own cache of the tables. So I did a refactor to enable that. And so now the, the architecture is that we have at least one ingest DB living in the main process. And then the web views or the applications are able to interact with that ingestDB through some web APIs that are internal. Um, ingestDB still works inside of a web view, so an application could create their own at any time as well. So the particular application that we've started to use ingest for is social bookmarking. This is an idea that we could have uh, a, a personal profile and whenever you do a bookmark, you could choose to publicly bookmark something. And this would be mixed in with all of your bookmarks, so, your pri so you have private, the ones that you publicly publish, shared by you, and then your pinned ones, and you know you could see all these together. But then you could also have friends who you follow and click on them to see the stuff that they've published. It seemed like a kind of a straightforward and fun use case for getting the DAT network integrated into Beaker. And we're still working on this, we'll get it out pretty soon. Um, this is a little bit of an in insight into what that looks like at the data level. Here's a uh, part of uh, Terra's uh, user archive, and here's the um, ID that we generate at the moment. This is how we're doing it because there's not auto-incremented IDs. We're trying to make sure we create a unique identifier, so this is what we're using, and here's what the record would look like, the actual link, a title for it, and a timestamp. Um, if you want to add an archive into the data set, we've done a pretty simple uh, social metaphor where you follow somebody and that causes the archive to be added into the ingestDB um, source set. And so now whenever, after following Terra, if I um, do a general query against the ingestDB's tables, it'll include her data along with anybody else that I've followed along with my own data. And you can of course create subsets of the view by um, using indexes. This is currently what the schema definition looks like for these, this bookmarking. Let's jump down right here to the bookmarks. Um, we have basically the record that comes in. The validator is called on any file that's found so that we can do some cleaning and also validation. If we throw an exception or return false, then the record won't be consumed. And so here we can guarantee the different definitions. The URL ought to be a string. It must exist. The title needs to be a string. Um, we can even fall back to create a value if that one is not specified. Um, you can check the documentation for ingestDB to learn a little bit more about what all this means. There's one index on the uh, bookmarks. That's the origin plus href. That actually is used, it's a compound um, index right there. Origin is, as you recall, that's the URL of the archive that the record comes from. And then href is this attribute here. And this makes it really easy for me to get the bookmarks from a given origin, because I can simply say, um, do a, a query, give me all the records between um, where the origin is of the target value, and then href could be zero and infinity and it'll give me all the archives, or all the uh, bookmarks published by a certain archive. That's kind of confusing, but if you look at the code, you'll, you'll see that, and it's, it's not too hard to understand. There's still a couple of to-dos left, um, and we're finding more of them as we go, um, and actually use, the, use ingest, which isn't surprising at all. Uh, one of the biggest to-dos is going to be private records. It's currently not possible to add data into the ingest uh, data set unless you write it to an archive and the archives are designed to be shared on the network. But uh, for instance, let's scroll back here. We have uh, private bookmarks. 
And so how are we able to have private bookmarks and be sure that they're not going to get shared off on the network in the data archive? And um, it would be really nice if it would be possible to write records into the local cache only um, that are allegedly a part of an existing archive so that I don't have to create multiple, like a private archive and a public archive. That's, uh, if you dig into the code, you'll know what I'm talking about. So private records are part of what we need in the future. Auto uncommitted keys would be very nice so that we don't have to do these long, um, ugly keys like this. Um, and then more battle testing, more finding out what works about ingest and what doesn't. But I hope that was a little bit educational. Uh, thanks for watching, and, um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. We'll be uh, online on IRC and Twitter, so feel free to ask.